and we're recording. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode of Grown Women Growing Wealth. I am Daphne Jones, your financial educator, Bitcoin mistress, and all that good stuff. And today's guest is Angela Mundor. She's a vetted ClickUp consultant. She's going to explain to you what that is. And she's uh she's a project manager by uh I guess by training, you know, specializing in helping entrepreneurs build amazing teams using processes, systems, and here comes that dreaded word, time management. She's also a fellow podcaster. Uh, her podcast is the Overgivers Anonymous Podcast. And of course, we're going to go into that because um I like the premise behind it. So welcome, Angela. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, it's great to have you. And of course, welcome Roberta Ravella, the most outstanding podcast partner ever. I don't know if I was so outstanding this morning. I feel like I just flew in. <laughs> uh -uh. It's one of those mornings where my time management could use some uh, help. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're, I'm going to make a note to get back to the time management thing. But <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Showing Angela up matters. And I, yeah, Angela and I were geeking out. Uh, <laughs> Because that, that's the name of her, uh, that's your, is that the name of the website or is that your dot? Yeah, it's my business name. And also it's, it's uh, my dots, dot CA because, you know, and uh, yeah, everything. Yeah. Geeky girl. We were, we were sharing our uh, way back stories in, in IT because that, that was my founding also. Yeah. We're, don't go on the way back machine on geeky girl. <laughs> CA. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> you know, we were talking about working on, on trash eighties, which was the computer <laughs> released by Radio Shack way back before the earth cooled. <laughs> that thing came with no hard drive and a monochrome monitor. <laughs> it, it means no color, it was just green. Green, green and black. black. Screen. Yeah, oh, don't yeah. get yourself thinking of it as white. No, it's, it's green. <laughs> it's green, it's green. So I, I'm assuming that in that that in your, your help for, uh, what, you tell us how you help entrepreneurs, business owners. Well, you know, it's it's uh, one of the things I think that is the most interesting is that we, we all come to our entrepreneurial experience with what we've gathered along the way. And what I like to do or what I end up, I say what I end up helping is people who've actually been out in the world, maybe corporately or they've worked else elsewise, like from a J-O-B perspective before they started their own business. And then now they've come to their business with this mindset of employee and they have an entrepreneurial desire, a drive, but they don't know how to shift gears. And so I really get to help them to understand. And from a time management perspective, oh, we lost. We're gone. Okay, keep going. All right. <laughs> from a time management perspective, um, lots of people think, geez, I'm working eight hours a day. And so therefore, I should be working eight hours a day in my business when that really just isn't truth like that's just not how it works so helping them understand what they want their life to look like what does that mean for their business what are your boundaries how do you put those boundaries in place how do you maintain those and how do you make sure that your clients and uh, business partners and team members also um, honor those boundaries along the way mm -hmm. as well nice I ask that question a lot um, what do you want your life to look like yeah because when I mean, when I was in my job, I was in sales. We were 100% commission, so it was considered our own business. But um, we were told what our life would look like, and that was you will answer the phone and the email and the text 24/7, uh, yes. and you yeah, will be very grateful, hard. <laughs> right? And you will be grateful. So going into entrepreneurship, I almost did the op opposite. Like I had to reconnect with what it looks like to pick how I want because I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not doing anything on the weekends. I'm not doing anything after four o'clock. I'm not doing anything after three o'clock. Don't text me. Don't call. So I had to reconnect with, okay, you're, you're gonna have to work in this. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a duh thing to say, but you know, but how do I want it to look? When right. will I say I'm done and I'm done. And, and on what terms, right? There's sure. Right. I mean, this whole hustle culture, I really hate. I just, I oh. despise the hustle culture. Uh, it doesn't it specifically it doesn't it doesn't work for the people I work for. I'm neurodiverse. I have ADHD. It doesn't work for me. It's never going to work mm -hmm. for me. However, mm -hmm. there are times in my business when damn right I hustle. There are times when I'm putting in a ton of hours or I'm putting in a bunch of work because I'm launching or I'm doing or whatever. But it is not a 24 hour 
365 day at a week, always, always on situation. Um, and I think that's where people get lost in that hustle culture oh, yeah. and they burn themselves out and then they're no good to anybody. They're not even good to themselves. Right. No. What's it that? It's that guarantee thing, right? If you hustle, if you work hard, then this will happen. Well, no, it won't because these people no. right now working damn hard and not getting anywhere. Well, and that's what I love to be able to shine a light on. You can be busy all day long. You can be busy for four hours. You can be busy for eight hours. You can be busy for 10 hours. That doesn't mean crap. That doesn't mean to say you're working towards your goals. That just means you're busy. So you need to be focused on what you're trying to do. I talk about non-negotiables. What are those non-negotiable things you need to work on so that you are working towards your goals? You are actually going to accomplish those th goals you set out at the beginning of the year. Right. Like getting a, <laughs> like getting your master class out. True story. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's everything is focused toward that because the, the hustle thing, oftentimes you're so fragmented, you're doing so many things nothing really gets done. Yeah. Because I know particularly in, um, in getting something to market, when you set dates and you say, I want to do, to do this thing, particularly when you're by yourself and you're, you're starting off, well, you're not going to post every day or you're not going to, or whatever posting schedule you've set for yourself is going to fall by the wayside. And that's okay. You have to say certain things are okay because I'm focusing energy on this because I don't want to just be busy because you, you can't keep yourself busy. What is, uh, what is working toward a revenue? That's me. That That's what I'm looking at now. Yeah. What's In actually going to start generating some revenue. Yeah. We talk about income producing goals a lot. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's not necessarily posting on Instagram at this time. Nope. Or income post present of mine. Income generating activities, right? Even more. You got to take action. You, go. you can you can choose what you want your goal to be. You can choose what direction you want to head. But my gosh, if you don't take action, you're never going to go there. No, no. <laughs> Focused action too. Just not just. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what's what's the the meme with Denzel that's making now? Don't mm -hmm. confuse uh, busyness with pros with uh, progress. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can all be busy. We can all be shushing papers and writing stuff down and making notes and moving stuff. And, but that's not going to get you where you want to go necessarily. I think that's the, for me, that was the toughest part. Um, so I got, I got a coach to help me with that. Exactly. Okay. Let's filter out all this. Are you sure you want to do all that? How about we just narrow it down to two things? Yes. Yes. Right. Well, and that's the thing you see a lot of, I see a lot of entrepreneurs, they're like, I'm going to do all these things. And you're like, okay, and when are you going to do it? Right now. It's like, hmm, <laughs> all right. And how much time, come back to time, because time is my love language. How much time are you willing to spend every day working? Oh, well, you know, I, I, I really want my life to look like this and I want to spend this many hours. Awesome. Okay, so in order to do these many things, what do you think all those tasks are? right? What do you have to do? What are those action steps you have to take in order to do that? We break it down together so that they can actually put some logic, right? Behind the time. And nine times out of 10, they walk past after we've gone through the logic, they go, oh, okay. So I understand now that I can't do all those things right now because I don't have the time to make it happen. And then we have to prioritize. Well, and just make a plan, right? So right. what do you want to do now? What do you want to do next? I like to take people through the process that we plan your year. We plan your year on what we want to accomplish for the year. And that can be your everything. That can be your, I want to do all these things. But then when you plan the quarter, out of all those things, what are you going to focus on for these three months? Remember, it's only three months. And break. let's break. Let's just break it down. You have three months and people are like, oh, that's like 90 days. No, it's really only about 60 because you're probably only going to work 20 each month. So you only right. really have 60 days. And if you only have 60 days, how many hours a day are you willing to work on those things outside of the things you're going to do for clients? Because that's totally different. You have client work and you have working on your business, right? So how much time are you dedicating to that? And it allows you to actually see it for what it really is. Then you figure out, okay, here's what I'm going to do for a quarter. Now let's break it down what I'm going to do for the month. And then you take your month. It's like, okay, what are now my non-negotiables that I have to work on every week to make sure that that month happens? And you're only working on the small things. And then it doesn't seem so overwhelming that you have these great big goals. The other benefit I find of helping people work on small things, um, it's sort of that whole aim small, miss small. 
right? Yeah. If I go to the end of the year to decide whether it's working or not, ooh. If I, right? you know, a couple weeks in and I can see some action, some movement, if I'm a month in, if I'm 30 days, you know, uh, 90 days in and nothing I did is working, it's time to go back to the drawing board, which is fine because a lot of times stuff we do just doesn't work. It's, you know, we've got to make adjustments. But if you're doing the small steps and you can see along the way, okay, this is working, this isn't working, I need to make these adjustments as opposed to waiting until you spend all this time and it didn't work. Yeah, I often say your goals, your yearly goals that you set is simply a compass. It gives you a compass of a direction you want to head. It's not a turn-by-turn -turn GPS by any sense of the matter. And so you deviate off the pathway. You need to just come back on and go towards the direction of that compass is pointing. And so it allows you to take those side steps and go, well, let's try this and see if this is going to work. Let's try that and see if that's going to work. And it gives you that flexibility to create what you actually want because you know, you might find at the end, you start walking through it to go, that goal I set is really not what I want. Like, oh my gosh, all the things that I have to do to get that goal, I'm not that person, right? Need right. to make a change. All right. Yeah, I was talking to, um, gosh, I think my brother yesterday, and we were talking about the difference between a revenue goal that's set for volume and a revenue goal that's set for, um, right, like, Okay, revenue goal, I need to sell 100 of these to hit my goal. Or yes. I can price these at this and I only have to do 10. Now, you're gonna, probably going to do about the same amount of work. And some people are volume oriented, which is fine. I find I am not volume oriented, um, which is kind of interesting coming out of sales where everything's volume. <laughs> yes. Everything's volume oriented, right? Um, but making that adjustment, you know, you hear, I hear people say, I want 10 more deals a month okay, what you're saying is if you get 10 more deals a month, do you have the time? Is that what you really want? What extra work are you coming into? Are you having to hire people now? Are you now working 10 times? Like, yes. Is that yeah. what you really want? Well, because, you know, volume, depending on how you set up the business, volume can cause you to run out of time real fast. And at the end of the day, without a team, we've set ourselves up with a glass ceiling we never thought we had anyway, right? I can't get the amount of things done in my business that I have without my team members. I just can't. But I didn't have them when I started. And it was a ah, slow build, right? Magic got, word. Right? It's, you need to look at, like, I, you know, I look at businesses that are bigger than me and I think, oh, I could do that. But not today because I'm not there yet. Right? And it's okay to start out small. The first person I hired at, on a team, on my team, was my bookkeeper. And literally, she met me once a year. That was it. But she was on my team, right? right? Second person I hired was somebody to help me with my blog writing. She wasn't there every day either. And she only just, it was once a week she helped me. Now she does so much in my business. She's so amazing. But, you know, like when people think about team, they don't have to think, oh, I need a team of 10. No, girl, grow slow <laughs> if you have to. It's all good. What I found when, you, when you're talking about building a team is that, you still have to figure out your processes first. Man, I, I, I can't recall we had a guest that talked about processes go to systems. But before there were process, what, what was that, Roberta? They had, to be a, had, they had to be project. a project, right? And when you're by yourself, when you, you know, you've got the idea, now you've stepped out and you're this entrepreneur now. Getting Monica the Shaw. projects getting the projects up and running is the issue. That's the big thing. It's getting, okay, this project, how does this thing work out? How does this flesh out? And that does take time. And that that can get on your nerves because it's like, oh, I got to do this too. But this thing has to be done first before we move to the next one. Well, you know what the most, the, the most eye-opening moment, I think when I first started working in my business was I was doing this thing and it was something I had to do quarterly. Don't remember what it was. It was a long time ago, but I remember it was something I only had to do quarterly. And every single time I had to do the task, I was like looking at, how do I do this piece? Oh, so now I have to do this. Where's that thing? And so I kept asking my questions like, well, where's this? And how do I do this piece? And where's this piece? And then I said, well, this is dumb. When I was working corporately, we had it, we had it all out. Like we knew exactly where all the pieces of the puzzle were. And I think what happens is entrepreneurs get in the mindset of thinking, well, 
it's just easier if I do it because I know where to find it. I just need to think about it and I'll just know where to go get it. It's, it's whatever. I ask my clients a lot when we talk about ClickUp. It's like, do you have your processes written down or are they all in your head? And a lot of us keep it in our head because we think it's quicker to keep it in our heads. Oh, it'd be too much time to write it down. Oh, it'd be too much time to document it. Oh, but let me tell you how much time I save by having that stuff documented and how much easier it is to hand off to a team member when I could just go, here it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I've found that in working with um working with a page designer, um, I'm dealing with trying to get this project off. And because I've slodged through trying to create pages myself, I was much better about handing off information. But now I've discovered something else I didn't know. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you didn't know that. Now we're gonna write that down what you didn't know. But we're going to get these pages up that are functional. Yes. Because good is, is good enough. Close is good enough. Yeah, better is done than perfect. Right. So we'll figure out how to get the, the perfect names and to use templates and all that stuff a little bit later. Yeah. Right now, we got a deadline to meet, and let's and let's get it out the door. So 100%. That, that's pretty important. Yeah, it is But some, somebody else has to do those pages. I can't. Those uh, you look on YouTube and it's like how to create a sales page in an hour. No, no. Then how come this video is two hours long? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, understanding just because we can doesn't mean to say we should, right? right. Amen. So, I mean, Daphne, you and I, we 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 we've been in IT for a long time. I mean, when I was working corporately, I was fixing computers, I was fixing printers, running cables, the whole nine yards. Just because I can doesn't mean to say this 50 year old woman needs to be climbing around running cables these days. <laughs> no, <laughs> I no. hire some other young person to make that happen, right? So just because I can build a website doesn't mean to say that's my circle of brilliance by any stretch of the imagination. And you're right. Like if, if it's not your circle of brilliance, it's going to take you more time to do. And you think about what is your time worth? Mm -hmm. right. So it, let's say your time's worth $100 an hour. Just pick a round number because I don't do math well. And so you, it's going to take you two hours to do something. And maybe when you hire somebody who knows what they're doing, they can do it and maybe they could do it in an hour. Well, wh what if you only had to pay the $25 or $30 to make that happen? You've just saved yourself $75, right? Right. Yeah. And you've got something that looks good and it works. <laughs> yeah. And you're no longer frustrated about the fact that you're losing your ever loving mind. <laughs> right. Right. Cause you can't get that box to stop bouncing or to get it exactly where it needs to sit, right. which again, takes time. And I've come to at peace with as each step moves forward, you're going to discover something you didn't do that you'll do better next time. And it's yes. okay. It's, but you got to get that thing out the door. You got to well, get this project pro finished to turn it into a process. Yeah. Well, and any project that you do today is going to be different than you were going to do it in the future. Any process you right now is going to change, whether that's because it has to change because of a software that you're integrating with. The way YouTube allows you to do it today is not going to be the way YouTube's going to let you do it in six months, right? Oh, no. Those kinds of things, those things are going to change. And I think that that's an important piece to the perfection. We, we're stuck in this perfection mode, which keeps us stuck, keeps us in our own way. And the whole concept after that you said, like, it's just better that it's done because it's going to change. Just let it go. It's going to change anyway. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Roberta taught me early release the outcome. Mm. Yes. Yeah. All you have control over is the actions you take. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because until you ask for the sale, there is no sale. And no sale gets asked for until I get that damn lead page up yep. <laughs> and start promoting it. You, you, know, you don't know what to correct in your marketing because, damn it, you, you don't have anything to market yet. Yep. You didn't <laughs> test it yet. Right. I was going through that with my um, landing page for my workshop maybe two or three weeks ago. And uh, Daphne's always good to give me back my own advice. Let it go. It's fine. Stop it. Stop clicking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had gotten a sales page from somebody that I buy a lot of um, you know, master classes and stuff from. So I click on his on his page. It was black and white with a video in the middle of it. Darn near if he didn't sell out that class for two thousand dollars pop, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 functional. You can read everything. 
it grabs your attention. It tells you this is for you. This isn't for you. And then there's this little video where he says, hey, and that's it. So yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm very curious, though, Angela, what is a click up vetted consultant? What does that mean? OK, so I'll start with what, what is click up. Um, ClickUp, ClickUp is considered a project management system tool. Uh, it's way more than that. Um, but so if you think of if you think of Trello or Asana, uh, ClickUp is on massive amounts of steroids above that. It just can do so much. I run my entire business inside ClickUp, um, right from my CRMs inside there to the work I do with my clients which is working in my business and then stuff that I worked on on my business, our podcast organization, as well as the blog posts, it's all inside ClickUp. Um, and it, our team runs every single project, every single thing we do through ClickUp and all our team communication. So that in a nutshell is what ClickUp does or is and what it does for us. Uh, as a vetted consultant, what that means is, is that I have been tested by ClickUp to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Um, and they have uh, given me this their seal of approval that, yes, uh, I am somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to ClickUp. Um, and working with a vetted consultant, you get some extra bonuses, which is kind of fun. Um, so when somebody does work with a vetted consultant, regardless of who that is, they get a 15% discount on their ClickUp for life. And they also don't pay for our seat while we're working with them inside their ClickUp. I've worked with small businesses as you know, a one person business. I've worked with billion dollar companies as well to set up their click up. So um, I spend probably 95% of my day <laughs> inside click up, whether it's for my business or somebody else's. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking for someone who project management tools kind of scare me. Uh, I tried a couple and it's too, it's, it tends to be way too complicated. Yes. Uh, like, if something's too complicated, I am not going to use it. I am not going to geek out on the fact that you can move a sticky note from here to there, whatever, whatever. Ah, there. Right. right. Yes. So, but then I find myself lacking in organization at times because of I'm avoiding. Right. Um, so how do you recommend, like, what's the simplest method for someone to start managing their own project and then possibly go into someone else, like when it's time, right? Right. As the business grows. So when you first start up with ClickUp, the best, the best part about ClickUp and the worst part about ClickUp is it can be whatever you want it to be. And that I think is what stops you, Roberta. Um, you know, the concept that you get in there and go, oh my God, where do I even begin? Right. And so I tend to think about, um, the, so there's a, the organization inside ClickUp, right? So the hierarchy of how it works. We have spaces, folders, and lists. Okay. So the, the, all the tasks live in lists. Okay. So I would encourage you to think of your spaces as the areas of your business. Okay. So think headquarters, operations, customer service. Okay. Then that's where the spaces would be. And then your folders break down from there. So if you, you know, inside, um, you know, your, your business, if you've got your operations, we've got a folder for your podcast, a folder for your website. And inside your website, you've got lists for your uh, blog posts and lists for changes you need to make in your website. Yeah. So you're breaking it down into the smaller pieces of the business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the tasks, um, the you know, creating your tasks is as simple as, so let's talk a podcast because here we are talking on a podcast. So each episode is a task, right? And each episode requires multiple things to happen to it. We have to, I mean, if you're doing guests, you have to get the guests to sign up. You need to make sure you have their bio. You make sure you have your headshot. Um, you need to, what's the recording time? These are all subtasks underneath that task, Okay. Then there's the editing of the podcast, the show notes, the uploads, and all those pieces. Those are all subtasks of this one task so that it all rolls up into this one main task. Okay. And, that, and that's your process. <laughs> okay. So that becomes your standing operating procedure, right? Yeah, exactly. That you keep on a spreadsheet. You do not. You keep in <laughs> ClickUp. 
because you can make a template in ClickUp, and every single time you create a new podcast episode, the template gets applied to it, and automatically all those subtasks are sitting there, and it's exactly the same way every single time. <laughs> yeah, we you can know, really not stand. Yeah, you just, ahead, made, you just made some of those because I, I told you earlier I I had been introduced to Trello. Yes. And I've seen some other project management stuff about the podcast. And I, I'll be honest, you know what always stopped me from doing it? Damn it, setting it up. Yeah. It's like, look, I got something else. I got to actually record the damn podcast. Plus, you know, I got to get it out to X amount of sites and things of this nature. So, again, being a solo entrepreneur, that that's the issue right there. It's like making time to do the groundwork, to lay, you know, the, as they say, to, to prep the ground right. to get things going. And you're, you're working so hard and trying to get whatever going, whether you're, you're the one that has to meet people, you're the one that's responsible for, you know, making sure the bookkeeping is right. It's tax time. It's always something. So totally. as I said, this, you know, make, you know making those things the, fit together. The difference, even as a solopreneur, Okay, because I mm -hmm. I did this stuff way back when I was a solopreneur too, but the difference is is that when you have take the amount of time it takes to put this together is much smaller than we make than we give it. We we, we okay. give it we give it more energy than it really needs. Okay, mm. but when we put the time together to say, okay, it's a blog post or a, or a podcast. What are the things I need to do with the podcast? And then you save the template. It's done. Now. You're not going to forget. So if you if you put a podcast episode out and you you're doing it from your brain and mm -hmm. you're doing the things and then two weeks later, you go, oh, I forgot to send it to this website. Oh, I forgot to do this piece. Now you're rolling backwards and going, oh, geez, now I got to find that information to go. Nah, now we just do it the same every time. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this book about I think it's called How to Make Your Brain Work. Um, and that's one of the things that he says you know, PhD researcher dude, he says, stop using your brain as an information storage unit. It was never meant to do that. Your brain loves to function on tasks that it doesn't have to think about. Think about your heart, your lungs, your breathing, your heart, your brain loves that stuff because it doesn't have to think about it. It's just something that happens. It's habits, right? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I've read some really great books. Atomic Habits. Have you guys read that book? Oh yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic book. Um, really helps with the concept of trying to build those habits into habit stacking is one of my favorite things that I got out of that book. <laughs> yes, we talk about that often here. Habit staff stacking came from BJ Fogg, another researcher that always have initials in the front of their name. Don't know what's up with that, but uh <laughs> Especially BJ with those Fogg initials. is a dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right um you got him and bf skinner the behaviorist but um yeah i guess if you're using one of those systems or creating systems period you are putting your habit into a format where you don't have to think about it right like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this coming tuesday when we drop the show the next podcast i'm supposed to do three things and i think daphne has to tell me every time did you do that and i'm like Yes, while I'm doing it. <laughs> did you do it? <laughs> yeah, so when you yeah. create it in ClickUp, it's already assigned to Roberta. Things that you need to do are already assigned to Daphne. The dates are all based on the date that you're going to release the podcast. So every single time it's the same and the, the timeouts are all good. Works out good. What do you do if you find that level of organization stressful? Uh, take a deep breath. Daphne, go ahead. <laughs> No, that what ra oh. I'm raising my hand. Yeah, that level of organization. It's like, ah, uh. but again, you just said, you said, look, if you make the time, it's not as much time as you think. Yes. And you're saving time on the other end because it. I remember going to the field. Um, it's like having your pack list and working through your pack list. Now, you may have to adjust it once you get to the field because, you know, you didn't bring enough Nutella for the very bad MRE bread. And that's <laughs> not going to happen again. Or you need an extra pair of socks or you brought something and this is heavy because I got to carry this on my back. It doesn't come next time. And so I get that about, about the preparation because, you know, as they say, pay me now, pay me later. So. 
so actually sitting down and getting that done. Cause I, I know I'm seeing that with getting this landing page out because this isn't going to be the last one. Cause this is part of how I make a living is going to be courses. Mm-hmm. And there has to be a structure to how you get these things done, how you get one, how you market them and promote them, which is one area and then actually producing the course itself. So, so we often talk about people say, Oh, I procrastinate. Right. Because you're not actually procrastinating, you're actually overwhelmed. So when you look at a task and you don't want to do it, right? We think we're procrastinating, but actually your brain's going, I don't even know where to start, so I'm just I'm just not gonna. So when you're overwhelmed by this level of organization, what it means is you haven't broken it down small enough yet. Okay? Mm. So instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have to tackle this, I have to write all my processes for my business, I have to make my whole thing perfect. And let me say, ClickUp is never perfect. No project management system is ever going to be perfect. You're always going to be changing it the same as a website or any other your processes. doesn't matter, right? But think of one thing. What's, what's the one thing I need to put together right now that's going to help me to save me the most time right now? What is that? Mm-hmm. What's the one thing? Does it, is it how do I write down the um, income and expenses for the month? How do I calculate that information or where do I put that information? Is that what's going to help me the most? Is it all the steps that I need to do the podcast? Is that what's pick one thing, break it down and just focus on the one thing instead of, Oh my God, I have none of my processes in my life's a mess. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I get it. It in breaking it down. Cause again, getting a coach helped me do this to reach the point where I now actually have a product and there's an end date and something's going to launch. And it was breaking it down and, you know, her listening to all these ideas and saying, okay, well, look, which one you want to do first. Okay. We're going to work on that. Um, Once I got past wanting her to tell me which one we're going to do first. (laughs) Fair, fair. That, that took a couple of meeting sessions. No, no, you, you pick what you're going to do. I'm just going to help you work through what you're going to do. You just tell me what to do. I'll show up. <laughs> right. Right. Cause that, cause in a way that's really what you want, even though you call yourself, you know, a business owner, you really want somebody. I truly get why people buy franchises, truly get why people buy franchises. You betcha. It's a business in a box. Here you go. As a matter of fact, you got to come to school and we're going to show you exactly how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's and, your products. Here's your prices. That's why so many people get into multi-level marketing or product or party plan businesses. It's the same reason you don't have to, it's here it is. Here's your catalog. All the work's done for you. Right. Yeah. But that's right. being an employee at the end of the day. It's, it is, it is a hybrid. I would say it's a hybrid entrepreneurial yeah. position, depending okay. on what you, what you do to take the business. You can look at it as an entrepreneur, but I've seen women take those things and actually build businesses out of them as well. Yeah. It just depends on what you want to do with it. Sure. Yeah, yeah the, but you the are, structure helps. But you're being dictated to, for sure, in all ways, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, we have that because we're sitting here talking about processes. And, you know, what you've seen out there and you're looking at other people. And we all have who we like on YouTube or, or some some social media person we follow, whatever our, you know, our our, our drug of choice is. And you have to remind yourself, wait a minute, they've been at this X amount of years. And also you have to factor in, not only they've been at it this long, they're moving into a different phase. You know, maybe they've been riding this particular plateau. And so now they're ready to do this Mm -hmm. because they, you know, they may be stepping away, whatever that is. So stop kicking yourself. Oh, it's too late. I'm too old. I can't do that. I, I missed the wave before the algorithm changed. Mm-hmm. that sort of thing this yeah yeah you are where you are right now and and figure it out from there take take what you need from them but keep it moving well and that's i think that was you know i mean there was a year that really made a huge difference in my business um where i learned this lesson it was a really hard lesson it was a very expensive lesson but when you have a coach that doesn't mean to, just because you have a coach doesn't mean to say that what they say is the law Right. Right. What what Mm -hmm. they say is not necessarily going to work for you. What worked for them might not work for you. But you're Mm -hmm. right, Daphne. You know, take take the piece. Right. This piece resonates with me. This this one feels good to me. This is the piece I'll take from this. Don't don't assume that just because you paid for it, you have to do everything they tell you. Right. Right. So. 
Yeah. That was that was a lesson. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the information, this is where you are. Because some of the stuff makes sense foundationally. Um some information, for instance, about uh, building blocks of actually having a business. Uh, bookkeeping is a good example. Uh, record keeping, you know, what's going on tax wise, mm -hmm. what's going on um, uh, business, business form. Are you an LLC being taxed right. as an S corp? Because that does come into it. And that, and you have to place that at a certain point also. Uh, often, I know I did. I got wrapped up in that a little too soon because maybe you need to make some money first <laughs> before we start worrying about taxes and business formation. <laughs> it is important, but it's important a little bit later. Again, yeah. you, you're taking all these marketing courses and you, what are you marketing there, girl? What's you're doing? What? Yeah. Well, I know how to, well, I'm glad you know about the, the Instagram cycle and got a hold of the algorithm, but what are you trying to algorithm? What are you mm -hmm. You know, what, what you are you trying to get me to buy those courses? Book? Yeah. Like, totally. you know. oh, yeah. You can become the course queen. It's not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Professional student. <laughs> Which Getting is kind ready of fun, to get depending ready. on what you're studying, but. <laughs> True. Yeah. Depending on what rabbit hole you want to roll down. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But it, it, it does not pay well. <laughs> no. And there's nothing it's... wrong with wanting to be educated, right? There's right. nothing wrong. I mean, right. I, I, I feel it's important to be educated on all levels. I I read a metric crap ton of books. I listen to Audible. I take courses. I listen to people's opinions on podcasts and YouTube and TikTok. And I, I can only experience what I can experience as a human being. And I can be expanded upon and I can learn and I can grow and I can have different values given to me if I listen to other people who aren't in my circle. That's important. But yeah. The money, the, you don't have a business if you're not making money. <laughs> right, right. Did you ask for the sale? Yes. So that's uh, so that's what this particular coach has helped me with. Did you ask for the sale? What are you selling? Of course, is what? What? Um, and also, there's more to life than social media. Totally. Although the platform is, is important. And I do love YouTube and, and, and plan to, you know, um, you know, to make it my bitch. But you still got to get out there and meet people, shake hands and show up and things like that. Still got to attend the, the lunch meetings and listen to everybody else's pitch. And <laughs> things of that nature. We learn from other people that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. So has, um, are you guys heading out now in Canada? Are you out having lunch meetings, you know, group lunches? And um, I would say probably yes, a lot. I'm a real big introvert. Um, okay. My husband's like, we're going to wedding this weekend. Are we? Okay. Where? <laughs> <laughs> How much time do I have to be with other humans? No. So I, I love, I, I love meeting new people, but it's so bad getting out. It's really exhausting, but, um, they're tent they're, they're, um, they're tentative, right? Like people are really kind of, there's a lot of mask wearing still that happens here. Um, okay. so like, I mean, I went and got my eyes checked the other day. We, it's mandatory in that particular building. We have to wear masks right. in that building. Right. So, you know, there's that kind of thing going on. But but our restaurants are open. People can meet. You can sit down with a multitude of people. That is happening. Um, but I think we're just, we're really, we're still really shy here. Yeah, we're holding back. Yeah. The um, Well, even here in the States, because I, I took my mom to the doctor yesterday. In those type places, hospitals, doctor's offices, you're still masked up. Okay. We're, you know, regardless of status or whatever, you're still masked up. Even in, uh, you know, Texas, as as my fellow podcaster says, we're licking doorknobs down here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's wide yeah. open. 2020. <laughs> we got friends in Texas. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's 2020. So, you, so you're still wearing masks in those areas. But um, yeah. But I've been to a conference. I went to Bitcoin 2020 in uh, South Beach. Yeah, uh, stuff back like in that's April. not happening in Canada yet. And uh, I, I remember when you guys started opening up for these conferences. I'm like, I've got FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go. And they're having them. It's like not fair. <laughs> a lot of them went hybrid, you know, where you could do the Zoom. You could Zoom in and... Uh... I kind of have a love hate with that because if I can't go because I can't physically be there, it's cool to be on the Zoom, but it's not the same. True. Yeah. My but, daughter, I have one daughter that works in healthcare, so we have to be cautious 
about what we expose ourselves to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, because she works um, in a personal care home. So they're older adults who are more right. vulnerable. So we are more careful as a household, but um, yeah. Canada still really... I'm like, okay, can we drive over the border yet? Because we don't live far from North Dakota. Like we we can zip down to North Dakota and go shopping. Like we used to do it all the time, um, pre-Trump. But um, you know, we haven't been there for a really long time now. And I'm like, okay, can we go over now because before we'd be able to go, but then you'd have to test and you'd have to like quarantine and all the rest of crap. So I've heard now that I can drive over without all the testing and stuff. So okay, I got some. Where are you? We're in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which is just okay. above North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we usually so go down to Fargo or, you know, we'll go down as far as, uh, yeah, I can't remember what the next town is, but yeah. yeah. So it's subtropical there. Where you <laughs> yeah. Some days are subtropical. We've <laughs> yeah, on father's day weekend, we had a heat wave here. I think it was, uh, Craig, I got to convert it for you. It was over a hundred degrees. Um, wow. and, and it was very humid. So it was, it was ridiculous that day, but wow, wow. It, we're at a really interesting place where we literally have like temperatures that do this. It's like, gets really, really hot and really, really cold. So get a little hmm. bit of everything here, but certainly not for long periods of time. Yeah. We have a lot of folks that spend the Ontario winter where I am. They come down from Ontario. And where are you? Uh, South Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we've been there a couple times. Actually, we came down there in 2010, and they had frost that year. I'm like, thanks. That's what we needed. <laughs> well, <laughs> you brought it, so apparently we did. Yeah, because it is Disney, subtropical Disney here. Disney World had the little signs that says Jack Frost was visiting us. I'm like, Jesus. oh, that's cute. That's all We're plans, about Scott three hurt. hours south of of Disney, so I don't I don't think they get frost here. Period. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it was, it was a phenomenal, it was a phenomenon. Like it was just, it never happens, yeah, but it probably went crazy. And then you got the Canadian, where the Canadians swimming in the pool in December, you know, they're all going. Yeah. <laughs> the whole Daphne, other, where are you? Uh, oh. I'm in uh, Texas, Houston, Texas. Oh, you are in Texas. Okay. Right. Right. So <laughs> it's, um, what is it? It's just hot. It's just hot. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hot and muggy. Fair, yeah. fair. I know the, when, the when. We were in Nashville one year and they had a, a heat warning in Nashville and where we were from in Canada, they had a heat wave and I'm literally looking at them. And I, I called my girlfriend. I'm like, you don't have a heat wave. This is a heat wave. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Y'all are fine up there. <laughs> yeah. Cause this has been the, the hottest June in record. These last, okay. uh, we're at the, what the 29th today. And yeah. we had multiple multiple we had a couple of weeks of 100 plus not feels like actually 100 plus yeah, yeah, yeah. actually ever when the humidity and, does not relent either right right but the, yeah with the humidity and the, like i said the killer what it was actually 100 degrees not feels mm -hmm. like right. it was actually you know 100 100 102 <laughs> stuff like that so um and very little rain so the grass is filling it so yeah everything's going but it's texas well, we've had way too much rain this year. Like ridiculous amounts of rain. Um, it's 62 right now. We're supposed to get more rain again. My God, we've had overland flooding this year. It's like, can we stop now? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Biblical proportions up here. <laughs> wow. So. Yeah. The whole world's on fire. <laughs> so primarily with your business. So, okay. You came out of IT about what point? Uh, okay. So. Um, I started my business in 20, 2009 mm -hmm. and at that time my business was, so here's another lesson, right? At the time, my business was fixing computers, running cables, looking after people's printers. That's what I did for local right. businesses here. Um, and then, uh, it evolved. I've always been involved in tech on one level. Um, right. it's, I'm now just switched from hardware to software really mm -hmm. is my flip. Okay. Um, corporately, I, not only did I work hardware, but I also worked software. So I'd work with, um, we had a proprietary software system that was being built. So I'd work with the end users. I'd work with the programmers. Uh, and of course we were the installers, right? So, um, I've not really left it. It's just that I'm more on the software side now. Hmm. So what part of, um, team building goes in with what you do? Do you help people build teams? Do you help them identify when they need to start building a team, all of the above? Yeah, all of the above for sure. And to understand that you're, you know, the team, 
I think that I've, uh, I've done it corporately as well, building teams. I love building teams. And I specifically love building teams that are um, strong and congruent. I don't believe in having a structure of a team where you have the dictator coming from the top telling you what to make happen. Um, I talk about it more like think about a bicycle tire rather than that person being the hub, the business owner being the hub where everybody has to touch the business owner to make things happen. You're just making a bottleneck at that point. So instead mm -hmm. become a spoke, become a spoke like the rest of your team members so that each of you can bounce off each other. It'll free up your time and your energy and it'll allow your team members to take ownership and pride inside the business. They want the business to succeed as much as you do. And I think that's something that business owners don't think about. They're worried like, well, I'm going to have people bring, I'm going to bring people on my team, but then they're not going to do it as well as I am, or they're not going to care about it as much as I am. But at the end of the day, when you build a team like this, they're just as much invested in your business as you are. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of team I like to help people build. Yeah, that's um, creating culture, right? 100%. You bet. Yeah. Which yeah. is, you have to understand the culture you want to build before you bring people on. And I tell people, it's really important to think, you can teach people skills. Mm -hmm. You want people to come to the table with some skills. Obviously, you don't want a total blank slate. But you can't teach them how to be the person that they are. Right. And so if you, I, so we talk right bums, right seats. I want to know who you are as a human being before we start working together. Can mm -hmm. we gel? Do we like each other? Like, mm -hmm. I swear a lot. Can you handle that? And if you can't, we're not going to be a good fit because I'm going to swear while we're working together, right? Right. So what kind of culture do you want to formulate inside the business? And how do you want that culture to evolve and grow inside your business? And yeah. then you can find the right bums and give them the right seats. And if they're not in the right seats, just move them to another seat. Because again... That, that human is so important. The person that you're working with, you really like them. They got to find another seat on the bus. <laughs> well, and that, and that definitely creates a loyalty, right? I mean, it, it's a very special kind of person who's going to screw over somebody that they care about and is their friend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Try not <laughs> so, to hire sociopaths or right, psychopaths. Right. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, and maybe you can ask that on your questionnaire. I don't know if uh, that's illegal or not. But uh, you kill cats. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'd be illegal in Canada. We can't ask those kinds of things in Canada. Yeah. Right. I can't even right. ask them if they're smokers in Canada. <laughs> oh, Lord. But that information would be useful. Do you kill cats? And do you smoke? Because if <laughs> you smoke, this may not be the office for you. <laughs> can't ask that in Canada. Yeah, That's funny. That's crazy. Well, you can ask, you know, one of my favorite, and we had Nancy Schlesinger on the show. She's a, a hiring expert. Her, her question, she's like, Ask them when something went wrong, personal or business. Yep. Tell me a situation where something went wrong and then tell me whose fault it was. I'm like, oh. damn it. That is the best question ever because if That's they can't one. find any fault in themselves, there you go. Well, when I was hiring corporately, I used to say, so you get your full paid um, lunch and you get two 15s. If you smoke, we need to, you need to do it at this particular port in the business and in the building and blah, 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 blah. But I never asked if you smoked. I just told you where smoking happened. And then they'd either say, oh, I don't smoke. Or they'd be like, oh, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> you just know. Right. Yeah, there you go. That's funny. It's always a way to get the information. <laughs> so how does someone decide what type of culture they want? Because I think, you know, one thing for entrepreneurs is so hard when building teams. Most people, that is not their skill. No, you're right. Or most, yes. like, yeah, I know what Daphne's doing. HR is not her skill. Yeah. It's okay. You just don't know. So what do you do? Oh. I mean, same for me. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on Daph. I'm like, Ooh. I got lucky with my VA. I feel like that we gel so well. Um, but that whole management thing. Oh yeah. I'd rather build well, from a, a culture page. perspective. What do you like? Right. What kind of, what kind of environment do you want to have? What kind of people do you like to hang out with? When you think about who are your friends, you could even go that way. It's like the type mm -hmm. of people that you like to spend time with. What are they like? Right. Um, if you can't get around your head that way, because some people can't, you have to go the opposite. You say, when you were working corporately or you're working your job, have you ever had? A, did you ever have a boss you liked? No. Okay. Well, what would you change if you were that boss? How would mm -hmm. you want that boss to be different? What kind of environment would you want to have? Um, and then it gives you that ability to kind of look at it and and put those pieces together. We work right. on those things together. Yeah. Nice. Those are great questions. When you were building your team, did you use a particular tool? Like were you Fiverr, Upwork, what? 
Um, you know, uh, the, so my accountant, I just, I, I'd met her locally. Right. Uh, of course, accountants are important to find locally because they know your tax laws then. Um, but so um, my VA, I actually found my VA using Facebook groups. So um, I, I, here's the thing. I knew what I wanted them to do. I knew what the task involved that I was looking to hire for. And I had a pretty good idea from a skill perspective what I was looking for. And of course, I knew what kind of human being I was looking for. So when I posted that job in the Facebook groups, then I had them all fill out a Google form. So now it would be, that was a long time ago. So now I would use a ClickUp form, but you know, I digress. Mm -hmm. I had them fill out a form asking them some questions. Okay. And then um, out of all the people that applied, because you get a lot of responses from something like that. Out of mm -hmm. all the people that replied, I picked the top X amount of people. Maybe it was 20, maybe it was 10, you know, like trying to figure out. And then I give each person a 15 minute interview on Zoom. The sole purpose of that interview is not to find out if they have the skills to be able to do the job. The sole purpose of that interview is to find out whether I like them as a human being. And then I, then we have our top five. And from the top five, maybe you only five, three, I don't know. And then you can then take that onto the next level to see whether or not they're the right fit for, you know, because I want it in that 15 minutes, I want to know personality wise, can we have a good time together? Because mm -hmm. my team, we have fun. We have a blast together. And I want to know if I can have fun with you. And then the other pieces is, are you open and willing to learn? Are you open and willing to change? Right? Do you have an open mind or do you have a closed mind? That's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. Do you um, do any testing like DISC or Colby or, or any of those things? I don't. I go on gut from that piece from, cause I'm uh -huh. leaning. I know really well who I am as a human being and I know who I like to hang with. And that's, that's where my gut comes in. Um, I know other people want that. They want to know if you're an INTJ or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't rely on those things simply because my brain doesn't want to learn those things. So yeah. <laughs> like, I know I'm an ENTP, I know INTP, but I was, every time I have to look it up and figure out what it is. <laughs> right. INTJ. I mean, INTJ. That's what it's. See, I don't even catch it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Start developing that system again. Like, what is your system going to be? And what are you optimizing for? It sounds like you're very optimized towards attributes, personality, work style, culture. Yeah. And then second is okay, I need these skills. Well, you would hope they were applying for a job that said, I need you to do, be able to do these tasks, but that's not the case always. So, well, and they have it in the, in the form. The questions are, you know, can you, can you use Microsoft products? Can you do this? Like those kinds of hard hitting questions and please send, you know, it's like your resume and your cover letter, whatever, but you get a lot of hard information from that. Right. So yeah. getting to know them it, to me is, is the key piece and being able to say, okay, these people have the skills on paper. Because mm -hmm. I mean, Daphne, you and I, I'm sure could talk lots about those people who took those courses and they had the skills on paper, but couldn't actually apply it when they got right. to the field. God, that drove me crazy nonetheless. But so then you can figure that out next, right? Like, okay, can you do this thing? Right. Mm -hmm. And so there have been times when I've, and I've hired for my own business. I've hired for other people's businesses um, where there's been like a test after, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. you're, you're one of mm -hmm. our final candidates. Can you do this? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a paid test. Sometimes it's a test that you ask them to do for free, uh, depending yeah. on what you're asking them to do. Got it. Yeah, I um, talked to a, a copywriter before who hires people to copyright for him. He's a he's a pretty high level copywriter, and he would get all the way through what you're doing in that process, and then the last piece, you know, he's got three people, and he'd be like, "Write me some copy about this." Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I and, did that when I hired my blog back. person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think if somebody wants the job and is willing to, they should be willing to go through, you That's know, you're skill. also kind of um, qualifying somebody. Like if I can't manage to fill out a Google form, you, you can't be on the IT team. Oh, <laughs> exactly. <sorry. laughs> you can't figure out how to upload a PDF. I'm out. <laughs> right. 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 Sure. No, we're not training that. No, no, we're, no. We're not quite at the intern level where it's just, where, where we're just giving away slots. You, you got to be able to do something for the team. I don't know. 100%. So what do you say for people who are afraid to hire? They're like, well, what, what if I have to fire somebody? Oh, 
or what if I pick the wrong person or do it quickly? Eh, well, tough conversations are, are, are important, right? So the, you know, the concept definitely of do it quickly, sometimes do it quickly. Isn't the right answer. Um, you know, you heard me say right bums, right seats earlier. Sometimes we've hired somebody who's an amazing person and maybe they're great at 30% of what you need them to do. Maybe the other 70% they're, they're not awesome at. So then we have a tough conversation. Hey, you know, I hired you because I need you to do these things and you're doing these things really well. And I really like what you're doing here, but these things, it's just not coming off. So does that mean that you need more training? Do you need more skills? Do you need more understanding? Is there a way that we can support you so that you can do those 70% or is that outside your scope? Because that's just something you're just never going to be able to click with. And then you have a choice. Do I keep them for the 30% and hire somebody else for the 70? Or because you like them, right? Because we started out liking this person, which is moving them to the different seat, right? Or do I spend the time and money to train them so that they can bring up that 70 so they become a better employee or a better team member uh, over time. I always want you to look inside your team for more skills before looking out. So if you have somebody who's doing something really well, try to expand their circle. Ask them, is there something you can do better? Now, there are times when we've hired somebody and it's just like, oh my God, that was a total cluster F. Like, I mean, yeah. what, what happened? Because like, I wanted you to do these things and like nothing came off. And you have the difficult conversation with, I wanted you to do this. Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to do it. Well, third time's a charm here, honey. We've had a couple conversations. It's not coming off. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to part ways. That's just, it's, we can't, when we feel like it's a hard conversation, when we feel like it's difficult to fire somebody or let someone go, I would encourage you to think about it differently. Instead of thinking, I, Angela, am letting you go. No. Geeky Girl the Business can't afford to keep this person on because Geeky Girl the Business is looking to move forward. And in order to move forward, we can't have people who aren't doing their job. Mm -hmm. It's not Angela who's firing you. Geeky Girl the Business can't afford to keep that person on. So take it off your shoulders. Take it off of you as the human being. You're not a bad person. You're not a bitch. Like none of those things. You're working for the betterment of your business. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the other thing I've noticed in small business, especially when you guys, we, all of us came out of big corporations. Well, I wasn't in a huge corporation, but it was big enough, right? A big old corporation will absorb a C player and their salary. Well, okay. That's that's the Peter principle, right? We just right? keep raising them up until they're no sure. good. We just keep them sure. there. <laughs> if you are a solopreneur uh, and then you need one other employee, or even if you have only you know, 20, 30, whatever, you cannot afford to absorb a salary. Can't afford to someone not, who is not, not performing their job. You, you mm -mm. just can't do it. No, no, but you can give them an opportunity to change, but you got to know what you can afford, right? What can you yeah. afford? Not, not what you could afford. What can the business afford? Sure. Sure. That time and money training is definitely a, a part of that too, right? Yeah, for sure. And sometimes it's simply communication right? Have I communicated to you what you needed to do? Do you understand what your role is? Do you get the things that I'm requiring you to get done? It becomes more clear when you use a project management system because you can actually see whether they completed the things that they did. Right. right. Did you do these things? Yes. How come you didn't mark them off as complete? Because I think you're not done yet. Oh, right. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got an objective the, standard. That really helps a lot. And you, because you, yeah, you set expectations and you've, you've got an objective standard. Did yeah, this yeah. happen? Yeah, it did. But how come you didn't check it off? Either it didn't happen, which is bad, but you're not checking it off is bad too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. other things didn't occur. So yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, dotting I's and crossing T's, it's important. It totally it's is. important, yeah. especially when you've got a smaller business. Yeah. Well, an accountability to your team and to each other. And I do find that when you build your businesses or you build your teams this way, mm -hmm. there is more buy-in. Right. There's less, there's less Oh, well, nobody will notice if I don't do this. Uh, nobody cares if I don't do it. We, right. we all care. Right. Yeah. Some, some Not just folks, me. Yeah. Some people are built to go into large corporate structures 100%. because they do want to get in a cubicle and not be and retire in place is what we should call it in the core. You, Oops. you came I'm here to get a paycheck everybody. and you don't want to uh, you don't want to be too involved in this. Exactly. So, yeah. So that, that's why I do my thing. Yeah, that, that's why you came to work for this massive thing. So you can't become a cog because you don't want to put out that much. 
Exactly. Yes. Yes. And you don't want those, you don't want the employee mindset people in your business. That's for sure. You want, no, not at this size, not this mm -hmm. size. No. no. Cause you always, you do have to recognize no one's going to love your business. Like you do. It's your business. That's your baby. You know, they think your kid's cute, but it ain't their kid. I argue a little bit on that one. I'll argue. I'll argue okay. on that one. Yeah. Okay. My team I loves think... this business just as much as they, they know when, my, when this business grows, so does their bank account. Yeah. They know that. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I heard it described very well by um, a leadership trainer. He said, you want patriots, not mercenaries. Mercs work for a paycheck. Patriots work because they feel like they're defending the homeland. And and if they feel like your business is their turf too, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they want the paycheck, but yeah, it's a whole different level of buy-in to what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And you're right. It's, it's buy-in. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Hey, cool. we're getting to uh Joe Rogan territory. I think we, ju <laughs> we just crossed over. Hey, <laughs> It's been great having you here, Angela. Uh, Thank you it's so much. awesome. Could you tell our listeners and viewers, hey, where they can get in touch with you? Sure. Ba you know, best place to get me is geekygirl.ca. Everything's right there on the website. You can um, sign up for my free newsletter or you can sign up for, uh, you know, to get some fantastic checklists. Find out a little more about me. Great. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. Hey, like I said, follow you on Instagram. Follow awesome. me back. I will follow you back. Instagram's not my you. playground, but I'll follow you back. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, looks like my girl is frozen up. But we're going to hey, kidding. let you go, and uh, I'm going to say bye for Roberta, and oh. uh, bye bye listeners. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Angela. Bye, bye for Roberta. being here, Angela. Thank you.